Hello, welcome to my channel Christian Faith and Fiction. My name's Lou and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Now I've done this tag previous years, I felt like doing it again this year, just taking a look back at uh, so far in the first six months of the year. There are some questions with this tag that I will go through. I'm also going to take a look at my reading goals for the year just to see how I'm getting on. And if you want to play along and answer, uh, please do so down in the comments. I'd like to see your answers as well. So question one was, what is the best book you've read so far in 2023? I've got a couple of books that could fit into this one, but one of the books could fit into the question number two. So I'm going to go with um, Set the Stars Alight by Amanda Dykes. This one is one of the two books that I've rated 10 out of 10 for story enjoyment. I found it really emotional and um, yeah, the language just really gripped me and gripped my emotions. It's dual time period uh, story in the sort of present day. There is um, two friends who've been friends since childhood but have drifted apart and now came have come back together. The main character Lucy, she is really into um, finding out about what's happened to some one of the ships in the Napoleonic War and sort of where it's disappeared to so she's hunting for that and she reconnects with her um, best friend from childhood Dash in the process and then in the historical time period it's based around one of the guys who gets um, sent to work on a ship in the Napoleonic Wars so it's following his story and the two things are interconnected and intertwined and the further you go into the, um, the book. So I also gave this one three out of three for Christian faith content. There was some really great uh, Christian faith in there, some great quotes. So yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Question two, what is the best sequel you've read so far in 2023? Um, another book that I gave 10 out of 10 to is North or Be Eaten by Andrew Peterson. This is book two in the Wing Feather saga and absolutely love this one. Loved it more than the first one, I think. Um, definitely there's a lot of things going on, uh, it, there's a real sort of journey from the beginning to the end of, of with following the children, there's still like a lot of humour in there, um, it's a middle grade fantasy novel, um, a sort of fantastical fantasy, there's sort of crazy creatures and there's some fighting and some of the world feels a bit like Nazi occupied uh, Europe uh, at times. Uh, there's a lot of fighting, rescuing, escaping, hiding. Um, yeah, so some of it was very emotional a couple of times, really choked up, um, and some of it just made me giggle because it's just fun. So yeah, I love that one. Question number three, what new release haven't you read yet but want to? Uh, I'm going to pick The Cairo Curse by Pepper Basham and Fairest of Heart by Karen Wittemeyer. Both of those sounded really interesting to me. They both are historical Christian fiction books and uh, The Cairo Curse is the sequel to The Mistletoe Countess which I read at the beginning of the year or the end of last year um, and I enjoyed that one so um, I really want to get to the sequel of that one. And then um, Fairest of Heart is like um, a historical retelling of Snow White, I think, <laughs> um, in a totally different setting from what I've usually read retellings. So yeah, those two I really want to get to. Question number four, what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? I am going to choose two books. Uh, the Love Script by Tony Shiloh is a contemporary romance set in Hollywood that's coming out and then um, Beautiful Disguise by Rosanna M. White, which is the first book in her new series. And it's going to be like historical aristocracy, spies, like a uh, private spy um, agency, as opposed to a private detective agency. Uh, so yeah, both of those I really want to read at some point. Question number five, what is your biggest disappointment? Uh, I don't think I've had any books that are really badly disappointing. 
Um, but my lowest rated books that I've got were um, Now We Are Six by A.A. A. Milne. Um, didn't particularly love the poetry in that one. And then The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Um, I only gave those to three stars. Question six, what's your biggest surprise? Again, I don't know if I was surprised by any books necessarily, but something I wasn't expecting is The Golden Braid by Melanie Dickson. This book is taking place at the same time as The Princess Spy, the previous book, and I didn't expect that, and I love The Princess Spy, and so I actually, I love this one as well. I gave it 9.5 out of 10 for story enjoyment. So yeah, that was kind of unexpected for me in a good way. Question seven, who is your favorite new author, debut or new to you? I am gonna choose Nicole Deese for this one because I read the Words We Lost, which came out this year, and um, absolutely, I loved it. I gave it five stars. Um, as a contemporary romance, there was a lot of depth going on, a lot of character um, interactions and char a lot of sort of stuff going on for the characters. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, I was so glad that I did enjoy um, her writing because I know she's a popular author, um, so yeah, that was great. Question eight, who is your newest fictional crush? Uh, for that one, I'm gonna pick Mr. Henschel from the Sisters of Sea View. Uh, you know, you gotta love a guy with a Scottish accent. I enjoyed his character and I, yeah, I like that he's Scottish and slightly brooding. Number nine, who is your newest favorite character? Uh, I've chosen Grace from The Mistletoe Countess by Peppa Basham for this one. Um, I really look forward to reading the other books in the series from this one. I enjoyed her character and yeah, thought she was good fun to read about. She's quite like plucky, courageous, but also sort of very into books and things as well and wanting to solve mysteries. So yeah, loved her. Number 10, uh, which book made you cry? Again, I'm gonna choose uh, North or Beaten by uh, Andrew Peterson. I can't tell you why it made me cry because it would be big spoilers, but on a couple of occasions, it re I really did get choked up by this book. Number 12, which is the most beautiful book you have bought so far this year or received? Um, I've been on a book buying ban in terms of physical books this year year um the first six months of this year so the only book that i have got i got with a book token for my birthday and that is wish twist by nadine brandis and it is a very beautiful book um it has a very beautiful cover love this sort of ice silver and gold and the deep purple blue colors in that book it's quite chunker as well but it's quite long. Question 13, which books do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, all of them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, these are the books that I've got left on the book from the, um, the list I made of books I wanted to read off my shelf during this year. So we've got this so far, um, at the time of recording, I haven't started reading these as yet. So The Orphans Wish by Melanie Dickson, All the Lost Places by Amanda Dykes, The Story Peddler by Lindsay A. Franklin, The Brilliance of Stars by Janelle Chazilski, The Peasant Stream by Melanie Dickson, The Silent Songbird by Melanie Dickson, Can't Help Falling by Cara Isaac, The Socialite by Janelle Chazilski, and All That Really Matters by Nicole Deese. So that's the end of those questions, but taking a look at my reading goals for the year. Uh, first of all, I said I wanted to read 36 books. Uh, according to Goodreads, I've read 29 so far, so I'm well on the way to doing that one. Um, secondly, do not buy any more physical copies of books for six months or until I've read all the books I own. Well, I'm really getting to the end of six months. Um, I haven't read all the books that I own, uh, but I will be officially off of a book buying ban at the end of June, so now in July, I can buy some more books if I want to. I may 
not I may hold back so far because I really do want to get to the books that are on my shelf first but I've been making a list of books that I really want to buy from the beginning of this year and it's been quite tricky um, not doing it but I'm I'm pleased to say that I have um, not spent money of my own on buying any books only the book token that I got uh, for my birthday doesn't include um, ebooks that I've managed to get on sale or free from NetGalley and doesn't include my already um, audible subscription that I had anyway. Then I said I wanted to read more NetGalley releases. I have done that. I think four or five books I've read this year. Um, so that's been good. Getting free books is always good, but I don't know whether I want to continue with that or not because it does put me under pressure to do a proper review and do it a full review and that does take quite a bit of time and then you think well is it really worth the stress of right reading to deadline and reading not being able to pick up a book just because I want to read it but because I have to read it for then and then having to do a proper review is it worth it for me at the moment it would be if I really had zero amount of money to spend on new books because obviously free books but I'm not in that position and I've got lots of books anyway so maybe I'll hold back on that for the rest of the year. I don't know. Then do not compare myself to other readers. Ongoing. <laughs> That's an ongoing one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, finished four series. I don't think I've finished four series. So yeah, whether I can do that. I think maybe I've only finished one. Not sure. I've, comp I've continued with several series, but then I've also started three or four other series as well so uh, read three new to me authors I think I've completed that already uh, but I'm always looking to read more new to me authors and then read three classics and yes I have done that I've read a couple of things by Shakespeare uh, I've read some children's classics like A.A. Milne and The Wizard of Oz uh, so yeah I'll pick those up when I feel like doing that Okay, so let me know what your answers are to those questions in the comments or let me know how you're doing with your reading goals for this year. I'm really interested to know um, how other people are doing and uh, I hope you're having a really great reading week. Until next time, God bless. Bye.